Hello, this is a uh, operation guide video. Uh, first, let me introduce the, uh, the components of the uh, sprue drywall system. First of all, this is the uh, sprue, drywall, sprue dry tower, and this is the uh, main house. And this is a uh, electric heater here. And uh, here, this is a cyclone. So this is the uh, uh, powder silo to collect all the powders after dry. Here is the uh, vision of the whole sprue drying system. And uh, let me just go back to the uh, control cabinet at the back. Here we go. So this is the uh, back control cabinet. And this is the door. And we just take it off. This is how it works. And the uh, first of all, you have to connect, connect the three, three phase power to the control cabinet. Here is the, uh, the total power. There are like the 38 uh, voltage and uh, 50 hertz. So for the total power, there's four wires to be connected. The first three wires are labeled in yellow, blue, and red. They are main powder wires. And the blue one was the, the dark blue one is the uh, zero line. Uh, so make sure you connect these four wires correctly. That's the uh, control points in our uh, cabinet. After you confirm the uh, wire connection here, you have to be sure you connect the, uh, the wires correctly in the power size. It's basically the same thing. You just need to uh, make sure you connect the three wires and the another uh, zero line correctly. That's it for the uh, electric wire connecting. And uh, before we start with the uh, trials, we have to make sure we connect the uh, compressed air correctly. So that's the uh, compressed air port. You have to make sure the compressed air is connected here. So the, the air hammer will have the uh, air supply to like work correctly. That's the second step. And next, you have to make sure the three, the three labels, the three ports at the, at the, at the uh, above the uh, three trial. The two are the uh, cooling water pipes, and the one is the sample pipes to feed the sample scene. So there are two pipes. The two pipes, the, the, the two, uh, you know, shorter pipes are for the cooling water and another one and the uh, thick one the most thick the thickest one was the uh, sample pipe to feed the uh, materials in make sure you have connected these three pipes correctly and it's it's very it's very solid it's not like flexible that's the third third step Shall I? And after you confirm everything here, we have to, you know, turn on the, uh, you know, the breakers. That's the three main breakers, right? You turn it on. After you turn on the breakers, you will see here, there's like an emergency stop. Eh, what are you doing, Oh, you didn't turn on the, uh, the main, the main power is here. The three phase and the zero, zero line. So you will see the emergency here. The emergency stop, you just rotated the button and you will see the, sig the signal button, the signal, uh, signal button was like lighted up, which means the whole system was connected to the power. So this one, means the power is on, right? So for the first, uh, um, you know, the indicator indicates the uh, inlet temperature, and this one is the outlet temperature uh, label. We just let tell you what's the temperature of the outlet. And this one is the, uh, you know, controller of the atomizer. By rotating this button, you will change the parameter of the rotating atomizer. So the speed was adjustable. And uh, once you turn on the breakers at the uh, back break, at uh, the back uh, cabinet, you will see, you see, the voltage was around 30, 
380, which is correct. So we have the power for the whole system all. And next, here we have prepared, prepared two buttons of you know solutions. The first one is the water, and another one is the polymer suspension for this trial. This is the pump for the uh, you know to feed the sample scene. And here's another another pump which you can just you you know just immerse that in the water tank. This is for the cooling for the cooling of the uh, atomizer. And here's like two powers. That's 220 20, uh, volts for these two powers. And these two powers are used to for the uh, you know water pump and the sample pump. So you have to make sure you connect it this as well. So after we did all everything here, the trials is ready. So we can you know we can just you know, start these trials. First of all, you have to turn on the uh, induced draft fan. Before you turn on the heater, the electric heater, you have to make sure the air is feeding in. So the heat will be like, you know, transferred by the uh, air. So you see, after I, I push the uh, induced draft fan powder, the induced draft fan is on. And turn on the uh, lights. And then turn on the uh, electric heater here. And we set the uh, inlet temperature here, right? You can set the inlet temperature. Let's just set the inlet temperature to 100. One hundred forty degrees. That's the uh, setting for the inlet temperature. And the atomizer is not turned turn on yet because we haven't feed the uh, sample scene. So it's not ready to turn on the atomizer at this time. We have to make sure that all the temperature reach to 80 degrees, at least 80 degrees, so we can feed the water in first to reheat the system first. So let's just wait for the, uh, you know, the increase of the temperature for a few minutes until until the uh, outlet temperature uh, reach to 80 or above 80 degrees, we can feed the water in. Here is the inside of the uh, spirit trial. Before we feed the uh, sample thing, so it's very clean, you see. It's polished, it is polished very well. This is the uh, cleaning component. If the uh, glass is covered by those powder, you can just rotate it to clean it. And that's the door for the uh, you know inspection hole. After you finish the uh, trials, you can turn it on and clean the, uh, you know, some parts of the chamber. And that's the elbow. The uh, exhaust uh, air was just goes through from the elbow and go to the cyclone. And the powders will be packed here. That's just the circulation. You see the engine's draft fan. The exhaust here was just, you know, exhaust here. So maybe in your lab, you can just connect another pipe to collect all the wastewater and just pump it out. Let's just check the... Uh, so here, the outlet temperature reached to 37. It's not ready to feed samples yet because we have to wait it till 80 degrees. So the, the outlet temperature reached to 80 degrees. So at this point, we can turn on the uh, atomizer. And the normal setting for the uh, atomizer parameter is 400 hertz. So here, we can just we just turn on the uh, atomizer button and we rotate the, uh, you know, till it reaches to 40. So it's 40 already. 
So here. You can see the atomizer is rotating, the disc is rotating, but it's too fast, you can just, it's really hard to, you know, see how it rotates. So after we turn on the atomizer, we can feed in the water in. So here is the, uh, you know, the feeding pipe. And that's the uh, pump, the sample pump. So we turn it on and uh -huh. and we set the uh, you know to 15 hertz. That's the That's the normal um, setting for the. Uh, Feeding pump. As you can see, the water. We're feeding the water, right? The water is. The water haven't reached here, so we're waiting the pump to feed the water in. The water is already pumping, so you can see the water here. That's the little water drops. That's not the uh, samples, the suspension, that's the water. Here, once the water fills in, the outlet temperature will decrease a little bit, maybe from 82 and reach to 80 again. That's a, uh, you know, a signal, means that the water has already fed to the uh, spray dryer. So, which means the mixing temperature is dropping. That's uh, very normal, it's not a normal, so you don't need to worry about uh, the decrease of the outlet temperature because the water is absorbing a lot of energy, so the inlet and uh, the outlet temperature is declining as well. But we just need like a few minutes, like five to ten minutes waiting for the outlet temperature to be stable at a, a, a like at a data and it's not flexible and then we can feed the uh, the samples in so the outlet temperature here is stable so it's not flexible it's just reached to 77 and it's not changing for a few minutes so at this point we can feed the samples in. We just you know switch the uh, pipe to the uh, to your samples. This is a suspension. It's a portable suspension. We're just mixing it before the trials. And uh, as you can see, the sample is replace the water, and it's gonna feed into the uh, you know to the spray dryer machine. And it takes few minutes because the uh, pipes are pretty long, pretty long. samples has already feed to here so it's already replaced the uh, waters in the pipe so it's white the white inside is a sample color which means the samples already feed the thing to the uh, pipes and let's go back to the uh, chamber the samples are already feeding to the uh, spray dryer and the atomizer is rotating and it's just making the spray inside. And as you can see that the, the white powders are being dried in this chamber. And after it's dried, it will be go down to the uh, bottom of the spray dryer and then go to the, uh, you know, the silo in the cyclone. And the powders has already collected here. After we finish the whole, you know, the drying process, we will collect the samples here in the silo. 
it's getting more white inside. And if we rotate the, the, uh, the equipment here, we can just clean the glass. Because the uh, you know the specific heat of the samples are lower than water, so the uh, outlet temperature will increase a little bit because the water has like a higher uh, specific heat. It ab absorbs more energy, more heat, and the samples will absorb less heat. So the outlet temperature will increase if we switch the uh, the, the the pump then the, the uh, pipes to samples, right? So the outlet temperature is increasing and it's normal. No, you don't have to worry about the increase of the outlet temperature. That's the cooling water pipe. So there's like a cooling water to cool down the temperature of the atomizer. Right, that's the cooling water. The one pipe is feeding in and another pipe is just circulating the, uh, the cooling water out. And uh, here we have already turned on the air hammer. It's just keep pushing the uh, spray dry water to, you know, avoid the sticky of the powders and the hammer is equipped here there are like two air hammers at the two sides and that's the reason why we have to connect connect the compressed air to the air hammer if the if the powder sticky to the uh, the spray drop door the air hammer will just push it push it down and avoid the sticky problem. As you can see, you know, the samples, the starts from here, so it's already feeding this much to the spirit dryer. After that, we will see how much powder we collect. That's where the uh, exhaust air out. So we recommend if you have a pipe, you can just connect the pipe to the exhaust air port, and the pipe is goes to the outside of your lab, which means the exhaust air will not, you know, populate the inside environment. That's like uh, our suggestions.
the sun poster uh, almost finish up. So after that, we have to like switch the uh, the pipes to the waters again. You don't need to worry about the water to pollute the samples in the spray trial because water will be um, instantaneously uh, evaporated and after we feed the water in the reason why we need to feed the water in at, after we finish the drying of the, the samples because we need to clean the pipes as you can see the pipes are, are filled like it's filled of the uh, white uh, suspensions so we need to use water to clean the uh, inside of the pipe to make sure it will be not it will not become solid after it's it's dried so the pipes need to be clean and if we feed water after the spray drying we can clean the uh, atomizer as well because we need to make sure the atomizer is clean so far the atomizer is, is not clean yet so we need to feed the water in to push and pump the water to make sure there's no samples you know, sticking in the atomizer or sticking in the pipes. That's the reason why we need to feed water after the trowel. So after uh, the water has replaced the, uh, the samples inside inside of the pipe, so we can turn turn off the. Uh, Electric heaters. Right. The electric heaters are turned off. Right. It's, the signal light is it's not on. After that, we can collect the samples. See that? We have to turn on the, the valve wall first. So you just, you know, close it, close the valve here, and turn on the valve here. Right? And that's the powder we collect. That's the screw. We we'll just put it here. That's the seating. Right. So you don't you don't need to equip the uh, silos on after you collect the powders. It's okay if you don't you know connect it again because the vault is closed. The powder is still here. After that. We're just waiting for the inside temperature to drop into uh, around like 60 degrees and we can turn on the inspection door and clean the chamber totally. So right now we're just waiting for the temperature to be to, to drop down and cool to 60 Celsius degrees. And at this time we can also you know turn off the atomizer as well. But, you know, because the water is still pumping in to clean the pipes. So at this point, we cannot turn off the air pipe. Before we turn off the air pipe, we have to, you know, turn off the, uh, the pump first. And after that, we just turn off the atomizer, you know, just to, you know, Make it to zero again. Right, that's very simple. And you just 
That's an atomizer, the tenor L. So so far there's only one one stuff is still on, which is the Indio Street draft fan. We just make sure it's still cooling the whole system. Because at this point, the air is not heated again. It's just the uh, you know air in the environment, just like the normal temperature to cool down the inside temperature. And we have to we can turn off the air hammer as well because we have already collected the powders already. That's the powder we pack. No, it's totally dry. That's the powder we have. Now we just open the inspection. We turn off the uh, Indian's draft fan because the temperature is is almost 60 Celsius degree, which means the it's not very hot. And we use the compressed air. You will use the compressed air to clean the inside chamber. As you can see, after we use the air, you know, to clean the chamber, the powders it's really easy to you know clean which means it's not sticky to the wall. That's very easy, that's the first way. And another way, you can just use water to clean the inside chamber. And it's 
also very easy to clean. And as you can see, oh, that's it.